We want to talk about a story that's sort of been a slow motion train wreck um, over the course of the last week. Huge revelations from Dominion's defamation lawsuit against Fox News. We have learned uh, because of some of the disclosures in this lawsuit that Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity and Laura Ingram were on a group text. <laughs> First of all, big news. Yeah, that's but true. That's Because you never know how these people feel about each other behind the scenes and might hate each other's guts. That's kind of common, actually. <laughs> well, in fact, we find out uh, through the, the revelations in this lawsuit that they were talking about their colleagues. They were talking about not just Sidney Powell, not just Rudy Giuliani, but also other hosts, including Neil Cavuto. They were talking about Jackie Heinrich, who had taken the step. This is probably the revelation from the filings that has gotten the most I would say airtime is that uh, they were concerned when Jackie Heinrich sort of went into a correct fact check of something Donald Trump said about voting machines or something like that. Um, she fact, check, fact checked him. They were upset because they were saying privately, our viewers are so furious. Um, they're going to flee to an alternative source like Newsmax. This is in the wake of that Chris Starwalt decision to call Arizona really early um, that just infuriated many, many Trump supporters, many, many Fox News viewers, um, and did send them actually away from Fox News, at least for a period of time, to places like Newsmax. And uh, they were talking behind the scenes and saying basically like, this is killing the network stock. Mm -hmm. This is a problem. Um, they were also saying some things about Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell. As I've mentioned, this is uh, Laura Ingram. Quote, Sidney is a complete nut. No one will work with her. Ditto with Rudy. Uh, this is from Tucker. Sidney Powell is lying, by the way. I caught her. It's insane. Um, I think it's really important to note that Tucker actually did have Sidney Powell on and gave her a, like, he, he gave her a tough interview at the time and was, uh, actually pretty publicly skeptical of Sidney Powell. Um, Tucker also texts, our viewers are good people and they believe it, which is really interesting talking about the lies surrounding the 2020 election. Um, so Crystal, there's just, it's an overwhelming, I think, amount of information, like an, uh, an info dump that just yeah. <laughs> boggles the mind. Um, but what do you make of it? Well, and this is, comes in the context of a uh, Dominion lawsuit, which, you know, this is part of the discovery process where they're trying to show, like, these people knew that this stuff was all garbage and they still promoted it because they have a very high bar to meet in terms of defamation. I, I have no idea. I'm not a legal analyst, but, you know, oftentimes it's very difficult to meet that bar. But, um... I think the picture that emerges is of a group of people who unsurprisingly are most concerned about their ratings, the stock price and the business bottom line. Like that's clearly their priority above and beyond, you know, care and concern for their audience, care and concern for the truth or their own integrity or anything else you might come up with. The bottom line was the bottom line, which you know, that's not surprising. That's the way that CNN operates. That's the way I'm, that's, that is definitionally what corporate media is all about. Right. And so I think that's one takeaway. And just to underscore that with regards to trying to get this um, woman fired, I don't know her. Do you know her? Jackie? Hattie? Not personally, okay. but she's a White House okay. reporter for them. So I don't, I don't know anything about her. But anyway, Carlson told Hannity about Jackie Heinrich, please get her fired. Seriously, what the F? I'm actually shocked. This is with regards to some tweet she sent out fact checking Trump. It it needs to stop immediately like tonight. It's measurably hurting the company. The stock price is down, not a joke. Tucker added, I just went crazy on Mead over it, Hannity said. He, I don't know who Mead is. He had, quote, already sent to Suzanne with a really, Suzanne Scott being the person who runs Fox News. He then added, I'm three strikes, Wallace shit debate, election night a disaster. Now this BS, nope, not gonna fly. Did I mention Cavuto? And they were all very concerned about, you know, at the time, like Newsmax and um, what's the other one, OAN. Yeah. They were like willing to go harder into the election conspiracies. And there was a sense of betrayal among some of the Fox News watching audience that they had called Arizona early and that they had called the election for Joe Biden instead of engaging with all of this stuff. And there was a, also a pivot point that came out um, with regards to Suzanne Scott, where Rupert Murdoch had initially been trying to tamp down some of the conspiracy indulgence that was happening on the network. Mm -hmm. He put out in one of his papers like a, an editorial and made sure that it got widely distributed at the network. That was the day that it gets called for, that the network calls the election officially for Biden. 
ratings fall off a cliff. Mm. And there's messages from Suzanne Scott to that effect of like, well, this was terrible and a disaster. And after that, they didn't really try to tamp down any of the speculation. So you also see from the highest levels how these were all business decisions. And again, they didn't really care about like what was accurate or what they should be presenting to their audience. They no longer had control of the beast. They were riding the wave of what people already thought. Mm. So I think it also shows them as a lot more impotent than they are sometimes portrayed, which becomes relevant as you look at now, like the DeSantis-Trump mm. matchup. Um, Fox News and all the Murdoch properties are clearly on Team DeSantis, and they've been doing what they can to promote him, pump him up. That New York Post interview with Ron DeSantis, that was just like the most embarrassing puff piece I've ever seen from Selena Zito. Um, but how much will that really have an impact when clearly like they're not fully in control of what's going on here? Yeah. And again, like they actually canceled an episode of Janine Pirro's show because they're of what the guests were going to say about the election. And so you see that they are trying they are trying because they're using words like myth. They're, that's from Rupert Murdoch, actually. Like That's a word that Rupert Murdoch himself used. Um, one of the biggest things, I thought, actually, to come out of this was Rupert Murdoch saying, if we uh, go all in on Arizona coverage, that it might help the network. Um, or it sounded like even he wanted to kind of help Trump in, in uh, Arizona coverage. And so that's interesting because you see Rupert, Rupert Murdoch himself directly weighing in on editorial decisions at Fox News. That's a good insight into uh, the network's operation, especially on sensitive stories like this. Um, but I think there's a, there's a way to look at it in which, to your point, Fox is trying to control the beast. They're trying to control Lou Dobbs. They're trying to control Janine Pirro. They're trying to um, rein in something that I mean, in in some extent, did they help foment? I, I, the voting stuff is tough because I, they obviously didn't agree with Trump or their, these opinion hosts. Mm -hmm. We're mostly not talking about news hosts. We're mostly talking about their opinion hosts. Mm -hmm. um, they're upset internally with Trump. And that's a huge question, by the way, in the conservative movement in general. It's like, how much is it worth it to uh, rebut everything that comes out of Donald Trump's mouth when the rest of the media exists to do exactly that and is going to spend every breath that they have rebutting everything that comes out of Trump's mouth. So what is the like sort of cost benefit to fact checking everything Trump said, like the Jackie Heinrich tweet, um, when all it does is sort of push your audience away and repeat what the rest of the media is doing? That is a huge question that people debate all the time, especially behind the scenes in the conservative yeah. movement. And I think that is a fair question to debate. What I don't think is fair to debate, and I know you, you I'm sure you know people like this. I know people like this. Sagar knows people like this who knew what they were saying was garbage, mm -hmm. but they felt like their career and their paycheck dependent on saying it anyway. Yeah. I don't think there is any greater contempt that you can show for a group of people and for your audience than to knowingly lie to them. I think that is the greatest form of contempt that you can show for somebody. To think that they're dumb enough that you can lie to them and just feed them what you know you think they want to hear, and that that's what your job is. So there were a bunch of um, other little revelations we can put up here. Go to uh, E3. We can show some of these specific quotes just so you get a sense of a little bit. This is uh, Will Summer, who was with the is with the Daily Beast. Uh, Tucker about Trump described him as a demon demonic force a destroyer, but, quote, he's not going to destroy us. Um, he also said uh, we are not going to follow them. What Trump's good at is destroying things. He's the undisputed world champion of that. <laughs> he could easily destroy us if we play it wrong. So Tucker's kind of true feelings about uh, Trump and what he's all about come out there. Let's go ahead and put this next one up on the screen. Um, he also is uh, freaking out after the election, hearing from angry viewers, worrying that Fox calling Arizona for Biden will kill his golden goose. That's the characterization of Will Summer, while also afraid of, <laughs> quote, effing bitch, Sidney Powell has gone too far. <laughs> um, he said directly uh, that he told his producer, Sidney Powell is lying, effing bitch. That's the quote there. Let's go ahead and put the next one up on the screen. Um, 
You've got uh, Fox Brass and top hosts really not impressed with Rudy Giuliani. Hannity called him an insane person. Laura Ingram said he's such an idiot. Murdoch said really crazy stuff. Um, so you, you kind of get the sense of the behind the scenes characterization. And they fought hard to, by the way, to keep these messages from coming out. And I think it was a New York Times lawsuit that ultimately led to them lifting the seal so that we all have access to this. Um, one last piece, put this up on the screen, because this again gets to like the business model. And I think this is really important. Like whatever side of the political spectrum you're on, the business model is the thing driving all of the news and coverage at all three of the cable news networks. They are a business first. And so uh, Lindell had made some negative comments about Fox over on Newsmax. And Lindell is not only like an important guest for Fox, but much more importantly, he spends a lot of money advertising mm. on their network. And so the Fox's executives, after he made those comments, they exchanged worried emails about alienating him. And then they sent him a gift along with a handwritten note from Suzanne Scott. And um, the filing goes on to say that they had a strong motive to welcome him back on air and avoid any sort of conflicts because of the advertising dollars that he was um, shipping to the network. So, Well, and we imagine go. what this does to their relationship now. And imagine what this is doing to the, a lot of relationships at Fox News right now um, as this entire story has unfolded. And uh, the probably most contentious point or the, the one that probably be least popular with other people that I would make is Tucker, I think, emerges from this looking like somebody who was saying Donald Trump is being disrespectful to his own voters. And he was the one that like publicly did grill Sidney Powell. And he was trying. I think it's interesting that he's ended up getting so much of the heat because he is the top host at Fox that it's like all coming on him. Media hates like few people more than Tucker Carlson. So he's getting a lot of the flack for this. But it is an interesting like that in this broader context of the point you made about like trying to then control the beast is a really, really important one. One, and we are going to see Fox News continue grappling with that post all of them knowing what each other, what they're saying about each other um, in this really difficult like six month period for them. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just wanna give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.